One of the most innovative solutions came from one of you here. I think Dr. Adam, if you are here, I would like you to, uh, to stand up or show your hands so that you can be recognized. That is one of them. When the history of this pandemic will be written, the saying is, is always that there are three parts of history. Those who make history, some people write it and some people read it. I'm very convinced that when history will be written, he and his group will be remembered for establishing the Trusted Travel. Trusted Travel by Panabao is a system that all, all of us, when we travel now in Africa, they can check your COVID test in one country, then airlines can also accept that. When he called me up and he said, in the middle of that fire, we were fighting like in the trenches, and he was telling me about the trusted travel thing, and then initially, of course, you, you, you listen, but you are not there, because there are so many things are going on in your mind. But he insisted and persisted, and then I gave him a chance. Then we created a platform at the African Union where he presented it, and guess what, it became the number one priority in the world, the number one innovation in the world in the areas of travel. The Europeans, the Australians, the people from Singapore, and I think Canada, they have now all linked up in that. And that is made in Africa innovation, which we must be proud of. The Trusted Travel System is a platform that we developed in support of the Africa CDC and the African Union uh, as a public-private digital good and partnership to support uh, the response uh, for COVID-19. The idea was to have uh, an e-health backbone for the continent so that when epidemics of this or pandemics of this nature ever come, the continent is united and integrated because data is being shared across the countries. The platform was able to bring together a con interconnection among laboratories, among participating countries, uh, port health, as well as also uh, national repositories, working very closely with uh, the national uh, public health institutes, and in the case of Ghana, Ghana Health Service, uh, the Ministry of Health of Ghana pioneered a pilot uh, after the African Union and Africa CDC uh, accepted uh, this program, brought ministers of health, ICT, and transport together, and we were given the mandate to go ahead and build the platform. Ghana was, was the first country to actually use it, uh, for uh, election, uh, during the uh, election, the, uh, the Electoral Commission used it for contagion monitoring, for having uh, people go register their names, if you recall. And beyond that, we're able to take it to now about 21 countries, uh, where we've integrated uh, port health labs, digitized lab certificates, as well as also vaccine certificates. We're now moving to beyond trusted travel to trusted health, where we are looking at also connecting genomic centers so that we know which variants are coming onto the continent, where they are coming from. We are also now currently interlinking uh, other regions of the world like the European Union, UK, Australia, Singapore, US, so that Africa now is beginning to uh, contribute to standards as opposed to being just a recipient of standards. And so we are very encouraged and proud about that. It wasn't an individual effort. It was. Uh, coalition of uh, networks of institutions. Uh, there are so many institutions on this continent that have legitimacy and mandates to do things, may not necessarily have the capacity. Those who have the capacity may not have the, uh, the, the legitimacy. And in this work, we've seen these ordinary uh, people, some of them are just bureaucrats or if you like, uh, uh, technical people working in labs, working in departments of health, ministries of health across the continent all coming together. The Institute of uh, Africa Society for Laboratory Medicine, for example, but the Panabios Consortium that developed the Trusted Travel Program uh, include the likes of the Africa Society for Laboratory Medicine, Africa Civil Aviation Commission, uh, Afro Champions uh, that I co-chair, uh, the likes of uh, the uh, Africa CDC itself. We have also institutions like uh, Association of African Airlines, Many, many of these institutions came together and we were able to now build using startups, bringing together African startups, bringing them together to put these digital systems together that interlink us. We think that this is probably the greatest example of innovation, but also the example of giving meaning to inclusion and integration. So what does it mean to the ordinary person? We all used to hear about the African Union, but it remains very abstract in our minds. But today, there are people who are crossing borders thanks to an innovation platform 
that Africa CDC has been able to bring. If you have a family traveling with five, six people, uh, the cost of you have to test in, uh, if you're traveling, say, from Senegal to maybe Ethiopia and you're transiting through certain countries, you have to stop in all of those countries and run tests. Through a platform of this nature, the reason why this was a challenge was because there was no trust among the countries. You could travel freely across Europe, freely across the, uh, Asia, I mean, freely across uh, uh, the US, across states, because they're interoperable. Through this platform, now we made it possible to relieve the burdens of people who now had to travel from one place to the other because this country will recognize the tests that were done with those countries or the vaccine certificates that were being done. And finally, because we're moving beyond just COVID, we are now beginning to also understand the capacity issues that some of these labs have so that we are able to bring support to them. So that at one point we are going to have across the continent, all labs have the same capacity, all countries, and we trust the data. But more importantly also we are able to now direct support to where the support is needed. So it is going to make at a very basic level ordinary people be able to travel freely. When there's a pandemic, again, we don't have to shut down uh, the uh, uh, you know, lockdown because we have a certain sense of digital vigilance that would allow people to go about doing their businesses normally because there's systems in place to ensure that we can monitor, I mean, uh, uh, prevent contagion uh, and also the transmission of diseases across the country. Afro Champions is a public-private innovative platform. Uh, we believe that there are champions all over the continent. You recall that we used to talk about being Pan-African and Ghana being a pioneer to Pan-Africanism. But Pan-Africanism has become very ideological and idealistic. We think that it served its purpose in terms of being able to bring the continent together for political unity, for the continental unity. But now we think that the most important uh, uh, focus or objective is economic integration. And we now know the continental free trade area is one of those aspirations of Agenda 2063 to help us to be an integrated continent. Afro Champions recognizes that there are champion institutions, champion individuals in different countries, people doing amazing things. The challenge is that we, if we are not integrated as a people, as institutions, whether it's in the African Union, whether it's in countries, whether it's even ministries and departments within countries, how can we even integrate the entire continent? So our role is to find these champions and bring them onto a common platform using a project approach. Trusted Travel is one of those examples of an Afro-Champion uh, public-private partnership where we're bringing the legitimacy of the Africa CDC, the African Union, uh, the technical skills of African startups and African SMEs coming together. People would have never worked together on one common platform and building something that the continent owns together. There are other initiatives like the AFCFTA caravan that we are working on to also make it possible for the CFTA secretariat to work with member states work with uh, regulators like food and drug authorities to make it possible for people who say register their products in one country to be able to sell in other countries without having to go through the same processes of phytosanitary studies and things like that and tests so that we can now give real meaning to integration. So that's the vision of Afro Champions is to find these champions on the continent. Some are in civil society, some are in uh, uh, government, some are in private sector. Bring them together around common projects to drive this initiative. We are lucky to have patrons like President Obasanjo, President Mbeki, uh, President Selif Johnson, President Isifu, and many amazing political former presidents, and also very top business people, SMEs, startups, fintech companies, as part of this global movement. Partly also because we think that not only is Africa fragmented and siloed, but also we are multi-departmental, we are multi-dimensional, uh, and so coming with this 4D initiative that Afro Champions is driving in partnership with the AU, 4D meaning, multi, I mean, looking at the multi-departmental nature, making sure that everything we're doing is design focused, data driven, as well as also taking advantage of our demographic dividends to drive development in a way that is democratic and can ensure that everybody is included. And we're bringing the soft infrastructure as we are waiting for the hard infrastructure, which is road and post to integrate us, we can begin to use digitalization, which is where the majority of our youth today in Africa uh, affiliate with. Be able to use that as a soft infrastructure to begin to now interconnect us so that we can see e-commerce running across the continent. Someone in Ghana who does peanut butter or share butter should be able to sell to Botswana so they don't have to keep importing these things. Around. So that's what Afro Champions is driven. We've taken a project approach and after AFC FTA caravan, the digital, the, uh, the, uh, the Green Corridor Initiative with the Ministry of uh, uh, Communications in Ghana is currently spearheading uh, the Africa digitalizing the CFTA through their AFCFTA caravan, Panabios, 
and Nefertiti, which is also a creative platform to get creatives to come and be able to sort of uh, bring their talents, their arts, the visual arts, the music and all of that, using digitalization to make it accessible and affordable to everybody. It's one of those flagships that Afro Champions is currently driving with the African Union as part of the 4D agenda. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at GraphicGH. Subscribe now.